My name is Felix Nate. I am from Accra, Ghana. I work with the Wikimedia Foundation in the capacity of a senior program officer. I have been a member of the open movement for the past 10 years or so. I am a volunteer for the Wikimedia movement as well as Creative Commons in Mozilla. Um, and I'm happy to be here to talk more about like open culture within the open movement. On the question of open culture, I just uh, wanted to share that I think for me, um, the open culture ensures inclusion, uh, representation, and inspires creativity um, and innovation, which in turn enforces connections and creates growth. Now, what I mean by this is that when people are connected, um, learning is encouraged and growth is assured. When learning and sharing are encouraged, um, people tend to grow. And this is one thing that uh, from my own personal experience, I've got it. Because like joining the open movement and having to learn more about the way Wikimedia works and being able to contribute to it has really surged growth in me. Um, it's opened me up to possibilities of learning other uh, roles within um, the open movement. And I have contributed for the past 10 years doing amazing work for this movement. Uh, before anyone can get connected to anything they need access and um, open culture brings that open culture um, inspires that level of sharing that level of openness to ensure that people have access to information and fundamentally for me when there is that openness when there is that access um, growth is ensured people people become better people because they have access to information and like today Climate change is a big deal. People are talking about advocacy for climate change, advocacy for um, um, things like issues of gender, but all of this starts with information and information can only be made readily accessible or readily available through an open culture. And so open culture for me is fundamental to how human beings are growing today and how we are communicating and interacting amongst each other. So on the barriers to open culture, I think it often stems from the lack of understanding and appreciation um, of the open culture itself, which normally emanates from um, either the lack of understanding of the benefits that it brings to people and also um, a lack of understanding of the licenses that it come with. And so talking about the benefits, uh, like I did explain about my journey, for me, I have reaped the benefits of the open culture and many people today reap the benefits of open culture within our society. Maybe we just don't know that we do. Platforms like Google are pulling or yeah, pulling information from platforms like Wikipedia, which thrives on open culture. And so basically today, the way the world is connected and information is being shared, it's all based on open culture. But for some reason, a lot of these stakeholders of this open culture do just do not know that by hindering that information, they do not save the audiences that they most likely are targeting. And so a typical example is, um, me finding out about some animation docuseries that was done by a company called Animax FYB. And Animax FYB really focused this docuseries on telling the um, and untold stories of my country. And so some of these stories were kept in oral um, history and these are unacceptable in a lot of spaces. And so they decided to make these animations just to tell the right stories. And for some reason, these stories were done very well with a lot of research that's backing it. But this information was not available to a lot of people and they were, they were not reusable on platforms like Wikimedia or even the commons so that it could be, I mean, used by wider people who just wanted to obtain access for the right purposes. And so I approached them and asked them, what was the reason why you created this? They said, we just wanted to create this for educational purposes. And I'm like, the same people that you really want to serve, you're losing because this content is closed. And so a lot of people who want to use this for education cannot. And so how do you make this better? How do you improve this? Uh, to ensure that a lot of um, the audiences that you're trying to serve can access this. So we spoke to them, told them about the opportunities that it brings, educated them on the right licenses, and then they put this up on Wikimedia Commons. And so this is just a story of um, a lot of these um, companies uh, or these stakeholders 
really trying to put content out there for a particular purpose, but just not understanding the limitations they put on this these um, content by default. Uh, and so that's one of the issues that I, I normally see around barriers. Um, the other thing is um, fear of control. Right, so a lot of people want to be able to control their content. They fear that when they put this out in the open, they actually cannot fully be um, um, fully control this content. And so, for some reason, because of this fear, they just don't put it out. But I, I'd say like it goes back to the first issue and the lack of knowledge about some of these licenses. But if some of these stakeholders could actually understand that there are other licenses that prevent. Um, or locks the content on different levels and allows you to give access to how you want the content to be used, then they could appreciate using um, open culture more. And so ignorance comes to play in that as well. And um, control, fear of control is, is a big issue with a lot of people. And then loss of economic gains, right? The fear of loss of economic gains. So a lot of these stakeholders also feel like when they give out these content um, under the open culture, they really cannot make money off it. But if you technically look at copyright and the way it was built, it was built to ensure that um, these stakeholders actually, or these owners of the work actually um, enjoyed um, reasonable amount of um, economic benefits from these work. And then after that, this is brought out to the public for um, um, educational purposes and for um, improvement purposes, right? to inspire people to also create similar works or improve on the work. But then lately, copyright has had a different turn and has been limiting the, the, the essence of these creative works because then when the time is up, you find people actually going back and applying to keep the content under copyright, which often is not favorable to the world. And so I, I think the, la the, the, the fear of loss of economic gains is also something that really limits people or creates a barrier for actually putting out content for, for free in the open. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm sharing something that someone told me or may not have told me, um, I, I'm that opened my eyes to the open culture. So mine actually did not come from, I, I don't know how I heard this, whether someone told me or I found out by myself, but I think at a point in my um, open journey, right, my open movement journey, I actually learned that in my country, you could not actually take photos of um, public buildings, take photos of, um, monuments easily and then have them reused for educational purposes. And my mind was blown because I, I immediately recounted the, maybe over, I'm over exaggerated, but a million times I've done that, posting pictures of buildings and stuff on platforms like Facebook. Then I realized a lot of this information was not in the public eye. People just didn't know that they were restricted from doing these things by fact of or by verdict of our of our laws and so for me it was an instant thing to start promoting this knowledge and trying to create awareness about it and so at the time i visited the ministry of information just trying to possibly get the information ministry of information to actually appreciate the the limitations this puts on creativity or creative works in the country and so we started like our bid for a change in the policy to um, include freedom of panorama which we still haven't achieved up to now but i think that eye opener on my journey as a uh, as a volunteer in the open movement actually gave me the opportunity to create more awareness about it to people and to appreciate more some of these copyright laws and the harm it is doing to creativity in our countries. And so, um, yeah, I think that's, that's one, the very one thing that actually opened my eyes uh, within the open movement. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> the last thing is my personal message. And my personal message is, is, um, is that I think from all these examples and from all these stories that I've shared, you realize that when we share, everybody wins. Sharing is something that is imbibed in human nature. And that's why the very first humans that lived, and if you look down in history, humans were very communal. And that's why there's also this um, um, definition of humans as a uh, social animal, right? By Aristotle. I think all I'm trying to say here is that we are wired to share. 
and it's important that we share more of the things that we do. Let me just take you a few years back when the Wright brothers created the first airplane. I, I believe if the blueprint was not available today, you and I would not be able to fly anywhere in the world. And so by just keeping an open culture and with the mindset of sharing, which brings learning and improvement and growth in humanity, we will be able to innovate on our old ways. We'll be able to not repeat our mistakes and create things that benefit the world. So I, I just want to share this directly with um, culture, culture enthusiasts, um, people who work, work in the culture sector, librarians, and to admonish them to think about sharing as an opportunity to create access for people who have limited access, and also an opportunity for people to actually see restricted or creative works so that they can improve on those works and, 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 and make them even better, right? Because I think when we share, people learn, people grow, and innovation springs up.